Your voice, your opinion, your community. Fact TV, free speech, protected. Hello, everyone. Thank you for watching. Welcome, Keen. My name is Agis Rosalsimov. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate everyone and each of you. Um, today, uh, we're going to talk about something that I, really, I am really passionate about. Um, it's going to be art. Uh, art as a way to connect and also art as a way of seeing ourselves. Um, art is a way to express our inner world, our thoughts and beliefs, our feelings and emotions, our loves and frustrations. Through making art, we learn about ourselves. And art teaches us to communicate by providing another way of portraying feelings, ideas, and arguments to an audience besides words. It's also an amazing way to connect with people. Um, that's why I invited um, a very talented and successful um, artist and jewelry designer, Larisa Volkavichut, uh, originally from Russia, who is a very um, successful and amazing artist from southern Vermont. And she's been using her talent as a medium to connect with people. Larisa, thank you so much for coming to our studio. Um, thank you for accepting my invitation. How are you doing today? Uh, good, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. How are you enjoying the weather today? <laughs> I do, it's great. Yeah, yeah. cold and windy, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Larissa, I would like to start um, our conversation with um, asking you about your story. How did you end up in Brattleboro, Vermont, in the United States? Yeah, that's, uh, that's an interesting story. I came here in 2004 as a student for a uh, school for, of international training. And um, while being a student, I met uh, my husband, mm -hmm. who is local to Brattleboro, and uh, after that, um, we've traveled a lot alone. You know, we've been in different countries, we lived in Russia for a while, and about nine years ago, when our first son was born, we came here for good. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, when I met you nine years ago, um, you moved to Brattleboro and just like me, you were an immigrant and you had a really um, hard time finding friends and you know, f creating your own family because you moved from a different country, you start everything from, from the beginning. And uh, I remember you starting um, doing some art and like how passionate you were about it, like how creative you, you were about it. So I'm very excited to talk about it to you because it's, a, it's an exciting thing, uh, how you connected to people through art um, all, or, uh, all the way along. So um, do you remember how you started your adventure with art? Like, can you pinpoint when you fell in love with it? Oops, I apologize for that. <laughs> That's unexpected. <laughs> um, yeah, I remember it very clearly. Um, I was uh, working for European Bank for Reconstruction and Development. Uh, it was a really great experience, but um, work in and the that was in Russia. I'm that sorry. was in Russia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, work in the office um, was, you know suggesting a lot of time, you know, in the office, like nine to five, and that right. was a very structured environment. And uh, I wanted to have something outside of these daily routines. So uh, for some reason, I chose jewelry and I started to take silversmithing courses. And that was, I don't know, that was probably 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I, um, was making my new jewelry models out of silver, I realized that I have limitations. So my, so I needed more like imagination and I needed more of an artistic expression mm -hmm. in creating my jewelry. And I thought, how do I develop that? Because I've never done art before. Mm -hmm. And I thought that I will take an art classes. And I found an artist that, whose style I really liked and he happened to have like art classes in his studio on the weekends. Mm -hmm. 
and um, I joined that group and I started to go to his art classes like every Saturday. Uh, it eventually turned into an adventure that lasted like four, like every weekend for like about six years or so. Wow. But I really remember how starting to, to do art, starting to actually paint something. We started with a still life. Uh, it kind of captured my attention and uh, it became even more important than the jewelry, mm -hmm. even though I started from the that. Mm -hmm. So, and I think then I continued the both and then somehow I started to want to combine both the art and the jewelry. And, you know, it, it just went that way. Yeah. And you felt like you loved it, right? I felt time. like I loved it. I felt like it's really important, like, art is a way to tell stories, yes. even, even if you paint a still life, you know, even if it's like, you know, a vase, flowers, and I don't know, a cup or a bottle or something like that. Even if you depict those particular objects, you can still um, tell your story. Mm -hmm. But then you can choose your objects and then you can choose what you paint. And that would be a different story. And it's like, it is really an interesting way to observe the world around you and then put it out there. This is what I saw. This is how I see things. This is how I, you know, choose to represent those things. Mm -hmm. Or this happened by an accident and I liked it, you know, so... <laughs> Yeah. So I'm going to ask you, uh, what kind of art um, do you have in Russia and do you get inspired by that? So Russia tends to be, in general, be very conservative and classical in terms of like art education. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a good example would be the Orthodox icons. I think, you know, it's probably the most common. And Andrei Rublev is one of the well-known artists like or painters who, mm -hmm. who did the icons and then there are you know other classical artists like Vrubel or uh, I don't know Chagall who mm -hmm. became an immigrant then when actually he probably might be Belarusian born mm -hmm. and there are actually a lot of immigrants from Russia or ex-Soviet republics or Eastern Europe, mm -hmm. who came to the West and became famous here. Mm -hmm. yeah. So do you get inspired by icons? Do you use that pattern in, in your um, design, in your art? I think uh, unconsciously I use a lot of colors that uh -huh. I used on the icons. Actually, like maybe that painting right behind you, uh, which is mm -hmm. obviously not an I icon, see that. but it's like it's a lot of colors. From, yeah, from yeah, yeah, it's very beautiful. It's very bright, right? Very yeah. happy. Um, do you um, have any favorite American artists or any local artists that you get inspired by? Oh, I have. I uh, I I know a lot of local artists. I have a favorite mm -hmm. uh, local artist. Uh, that's uh, Kay Curtis. Hi, Kay. <laughs> <laughs> she is, is she from Brattleboro? She's from Brattleboro. Mm -hmm. She is um, a leader of Harmony Collective Gallery mm -hmm. that I'm also part of. Uh, I think she's really talented and a great person. There is um, a great artist from Massachusetts. I think she's also t teaching in one of the universities. Mm -hmm. Her name is Lynn Sisler. And um, um, yeah, and um, so what is your um, artistic style? What are you? What is your interest? What is my interest? Uh -huh. What, what so, kind of style do you represent? Uh, if I, I don't think uh, I represent a style. Mm -hmm. I think uh, like the qualities of my art or the way I describe it mm -hmm. would be something that is whimsical, kind of a little mysterious, mm -hmm. that twists the reality a little bit to make it look more like a fairy tale. Mm -hmm. um, 
I think... Um, you can show like the picture of it. Like, yeah, it's like... What? I think... Um, so beautiful. I love it. Thank you. I think I... So what the, what style that would be? Does it have any style or is it just style? that's who you are? Yeah. That, I think that's really folky. I, I think it's folky, uh -huh. it's decorative, yeah, it's... Um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, or, or like more like a fairy tale. It's like a mix of. Uh, what is that? That's a church. That's a stone church. That's a stone that's church. A stone yeah. church. Is there any connection? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is a connection. My husband runs the stone church, right. so so that's very, that's, that's very very beautiful. Yeah, so I think I, I like. Um, I get inspired with um, myths, archetypes, psychology, fairy mm -hmm. tales, and. All those things, I, they kind of get intertwined and, you know, put out there. Can you talk us through your, uh, your creating process? How do you come up with, with idea for different pieces and then what are the steps of putting them mm -hmm. live? Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes it's just, uh, sometimes it's just, I like the shape in the outside world, mm -hmm. I like the colors combination, I notice something and then it's interesting just, you know, to put it together and basically just out of my observation to turn it into something visible, you mm -hmm, know, like mm -hmm. a drawing or a sketch. That's like an easier process. Mm -hmm. There is a second way where I have something important that I want to tell. Let's say I had a third and I want to share this third. Then I think of a story or what it third look like Mm -hmm. Well, this is actually could be a good example. Mm -hmm. Like uh, this painting where the cat is holding the bird that is she possibly killed. <laughs> right. Uh, the, that painting is called like our egos make us bleed. So what inspired you to to paint this? So uh, I or was, did you see something in the nature? Yeah, that one. That one was the second method. There, I wanted to talk about the ego and how like you know your like ego make you like sometimes leads you to a wrong decisions or something or mm -hmm. and and I thought what it would be like how would I tell this story and sometimes it's like a lot of stories and I'm like well obviously that cat harmed the bird in a way it cat caught it and mm. then you know it has complicated feelings about it whether she's happy about it was it you know like so you came up with the story you yeah, got so I, I came you up, came with, up the with the story. story so you have a story with, in your mind behind the painting yeah and then i draw a story so it's almost like illustration you mm -hmm. know how it's like there is a story and then you illustrate that story that's actually also one of the qualities or the styles where i mix like the painting and the illustration that's really it's cool. I love it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what kind of medium do you use? What colors do you um, choose? Mm, so my medium is soft pastels. That's mm -hmm. my favorite and preferred mediums. Mm -hmm. And um, so soft pastels is basically like a chalk. And I love this method because if you use fixative or like sometimes even a hairspray, mm -hmm. Uh, you can put layer after layer after layer so so that um, your painting gets um, to become like three-dimensional. You could see the previous layer that is coming through and uh, it, it gets more richness in that. Mm -hmm. And it's also a very forgiving method because if you don't like something, you can always put the next layer on the top and no one would know. <laughs> What is it? Everybody will think that's the way it's supposed to be, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, can you please tell me what's the most unexpected outcome you've seen as a result of your work? Uh, the most unexpected. Uh -huh. mm. Like you plan to, like, I'm going to paint this today, and then you start painting or creating, and it's, it's a totally different thing. Did you have, did you experience anything like that? Well, oftentimes, um, Oftentimes, the most unexpected thing becomes the, the thing to treasure. For example, like you use the fixative of a spray and you use too much of it and mm -hmm. then 
the pastel started to kind of bleed or go down and then it's like and then it starts to look beautiful and then they're mm -hmm. like oh i need to leave that part mm -hmm. i was not planning for it but it looks good so it's actually you know i value those moments because mm -hmm. you're like wow <laughs> it's like i haven't planned for that but i like it so it's important to keep it rather than mm -hmm. cover it up Right, it's it's very creative that way, right? Yeah, and it looks like it's not just your process, it's right. like the way the painting kind of reflects to you. Right. Or sometimes you have a plan and you even have a sketch and you mm -hmm. have references and you know what you're going to paint and you paint it and you don't like it. And it's like, well, I follow the plan, it should work, but it doesn't work. So then you start like solving that problem and that becomes the unexpected thing because mm -hmm. it's like I planned it all out but I don't like the outcome mm -hmm. and then you know you add something change something and it's almost like a dialogue between you and the painting mm -hmm. and then something interesting comes up which was not planned before and that's does being in a certain mood influence the way you create art. For example, if you're happy, like you create it faster or the painting looks happier or when you're sad or depressed, like is it slower or I don't know what kind of, um, mm. um, you know, uh, um, ex uh, experiments you have, or, um, but mm. does it influence the, the creating of art? I, I don't think so. I no. think it's important to uh, it's not the mood. I think it's important to have your mind still mm -hmm. or like the emotional level still mm -hmm. a little bit mm -hmm. to kind of get into the space of a concentration. So sometimes like when I have kids and I take them to school and they don't want to go to school and like, mm -hmm. Mom, you know, that's not the place to start the work. You mm -hmm. actually need to reset and have it clear, like have no distractions. Mm -hmm. And as you start working, you know, the right mood comes in. Mm -hmm. But I guess you are asking about the emotions and how they influence the, the that artwork. That too, but I wanted to understand how, how it works when, you know, when you are not necessarily in a good mood. Like, do you want to paint? Are you motivated? Or do you want to be like, uh, no, it's not my day today. But you said that the mood actually comes when you calm. Right? Yes. Like when you reset your mind, the, 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 the perfect mood for creating art comes. When... Yeah, I, I, I think of it more like of, of work, you know, sometimes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you don't have the right mood, but you need to go to work. So, so as long as you have like your hours for painting right. set up, so you just go into your studio, mm -hmm you know, reset yourself and work. So you kind of need to get disconnected from the outside world and be in your in your mood of painting, of creating, right? Yes, uh, I think like it, it works differently at different times and different mm -hmm. people, but mm -hmm. I think what is important is because like painting is like what I want to say, how I want to say it. So it's really important to deliver that Mm -hmm. So then you need to calm down, concentrate, right. and and be like, here is what I'm going to say. And you just do it through a different medium other than mm -hmm. words. Mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. so, so when you focus on that, it, when there are distractions, it's like you kind of get off the, the track. Right. That's very, that's fascinating. I love it. Um, how about the jewelry? I, I, you make really cute jewelry like i have like really i don't know if you can see but i have like really cute jewelry you have very have cute jewelry pins, pins. Um, um how is your story with the jewelry how did you start designing <laughs> that's interesting uh, actually this particular method i learned from my friend uh, in russia um lena she was doing the laser cut jewelry she was doing this uv printed jewelry do you mind showing it to the camera please yeah i have um like you know like the earrings similar to the ones that aggie is wearing yeah. uh pins they're all wooden and they are laser cut and the you know the lines the engraving lines they're kind of mm -hmm. you know do do the line art and some are 
you know, printed. I, I'm not sure how visible is that. Right, and very, there is some, very cute. some illustrations there, and there are like these hearts for Valentine's Day that just happened. So, um, so ever since I started the art, I was thinking like, what is the way to connect color, to connect art, to connect illustration and jewelry making? And also, I thought when I was silversmithing, it was a method that um, is taking a lot of time and um, I wanted a simpler method, a faster method to be able to tell more stories, to be able to have more drawings and mm -hmm. turn them into the jewelry. And that's how my friend helped me and she taught me that method and then, and then I started to use it. Could you please tell me, because I know that you struggled with the, you know, being here as a new person in a different country, could you please tell me how art helped you connect with people? Uh, how it helped you cope with being an immigrant, dealing with, you know, all those emotions and all that stuff. Yeah, that's a really good question. I think no one really talks about it because, mm -hmm. you know, people think that you just need to learn the language. Yes. You just need Go to, to work and you get done. the job and yes. you're all done. Yes. <laughs> well, I was successful or I guess lucky in that sense. I already had the language. I already had the education when I came. Uh, I already had like the international experience of work, but when you come to a new country and start a life here, you kind of start from zero. You start from zero because you don't have connections, you don't have support system. Um, I feel like you have no identity. And you have no identity. It, it mm -hmm. looks like you're losing your identity. Yes. You know, you had like, let's say, a status in your country, and then when you come, you kind of lose it all. Mm -hmm. So then you need to rebuild it all. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like, um, I don't know, it's almost like like a whole like journey that you are going through, uh, finding yourself again, reinstating yourself, and being confident about who you are. So in this sense, art helped me a lot because through art, like through what I make, I can say, this is who I am. Yes. I am an artist. And there yes. is a power in that. You say, you have to say really loudly, I am an artist and to present yourself. And this is my work. Mm -hmm. And then um, people resonate with that. People respond to that. That I will like the way it looks. That I will like the story it tells. Yes. And they share, they're like, oh, I know exactly how it feels. Oh, I know that place. Oh, I really like it. And then it helps <clears throat> to actually be seen in that way. It helps to feel connected. Yes, and you also contribute to the community that way. Right? And you also contribute. Yeah, it's also like the... you are adding value to the society. Exactly. And I think that's, that's exactly something that you probably, you know, know like how a lot of like immigrants who are coming they need to assimilate they need to learn you know how this country operates but they also have a lot to add to yes. so they are adding value yes. to this society and that becomes really interesting way where you mix whatever you learn here with whatever you brought from your home country and then you produce something, whether it's like, I don't know, food, whether it's like the education or teaching that you bring, or some art. Yes, <laughs> and it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Could you please tell me uh, quick, because we're running out of time, oh but God. could you please tell me quick, uh, what are the accomplishments that you are the most proud of? Oh, Because there are a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, um, I've created my own... Um, Art gallery. It's called Leopard Frog <laughs> Art Gallery, in and it's Bradleboro. also my own studio in Brattleboro. Mm -hmm. I have my art there and the art of other amazing artists. Come and check it out. It's mm -hmm. in West Brattleboro. That's something that I'm really proud of. I need to look into my cheat <laughs> into my paper, otherwise I will forget what to say. Uh, I know I was doing. I've created the Stone Church um, Craft Market 
which currently is on hold, but maybe I'll come back. I to remember it. the Christmas uh, yeah, market. Yeah, that was a Christmas was so market. Awesome. And that's where I met all my artists that are part of my shop now. I started the wholesale uh, ju- journey with my shop. And actually, one of the most amazing things that happened was like San Antonio Museum of Art gift shop purchased some of our products. So that's, that's like really awesome. big achievement. So proud of you. Yeah, and I sell my artwork and my jewelry in a few shops in the Yeah, and area. you had and you have had a lot of exhibits, art exhibits, most in Brattleboro, right? I have currently I have like my art in the Harmony Collective in Brattleboro mm-hmm. and I have like my art represented in a few spots around the area but it, it's not an exhibit it's more like a shop spot a little shop yeah spot. Uh, do you have any long-term plans uh, for I your would, art yeah. dreams yeah uh, i i hope to, to to be successful in my uh, wholesale journey like selling my jewelry to the other shops in the country and i hope to continue making my art. More, uh, more art. Um, yeah. Do you have a uh, website or social media yeah, where we can yeah. follow you? Yeah, my website is uh, www.leopardfrog.shop. That shop. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, I really encourage everybody to go to the website. How about Facebook? Do you have any? Uh, I have Instagram. My Instagram. Facebook is not so active. It's also leopardfrog. Leopard that shop. Frog. Mm-hmm. Uh, I invite everybody and encourage everybody to follow Larissa to see her beautiful art. It's really amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Um, it's really amazing how you connect um, to people through your art and how beautiful your art is and how much you contribute to the um, community and how much value you add thanks to your art. I'm really, really um, happy to have you in our studio. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing your story. Thank, Thank you. you for inviting Thank me. Thank you. Larissa Volkovich. Uh, my name is Agis Hersasimo and see you in two weeks.